Hi there, my name is Cody Mack and welcome to another episode of the five things you need to know. Today we're gonna to talk about why your PRV screams. There are a number of things that can cause a PRV to be noisy, whether it's undersized, oversized, or just in need of a little bit of maintenance. A noisy PRV can call, lead to a frustrated customer, so let's uh, go over those five things you need to know. A common mistake when sizing a pressure reducing valve is to just go with the pipe size. Um, believe it or not, this is most of the time going to lead to oversizing and or undersizing, typically more so oversizing. But with that in mind, it's, it's something that you really wanna to try to avoid because when you just go with the pipe size, you don't necessarily know exactly what that customer is going to need. Uh, you think, for example, maybe a building got repurposed. Maybe in, in one era it was using a ton of water, but then now you've got a new tenant in this building that doesn't use much water at all. So you really gotta consider that when you're sizing the pressure reducing valve and so if you do put in a PRV that maybe is quite a bit oversized it will probably work just fine while you're there but then you're gonna get a call back because it's hammering or it's chattering or it's squealing or whatever the case may be and, and that's something that you obviously want to avoid callbacks are not good so definitely size it appropriately uh, look into a water demand calculator or talk to an engineer make sure you're getting that sizing so you can get them the right product and the right size that they need now we talked about oversizing a pressure reducing valve, but not quite as common of an issue is actually undersizing a PRV, but it can happen. Now at maximum capacity, what you're gonna find is that you're gonna have a really, really high velocity through that pressure reducing valve and it's gonna cause it to screech and squeal and scream. And it's really only going to happen when you're at maximum capacity for that building, okay? And you know, you get a few uh, fixtures going at once, it's probably not gonna be that big of a deal, but you've got a big rush hour in the morning at a multifamily building where everybody's taking a shower, uh, that's gonna be where you're gonna run into that squealing. So make sure you're not undersizing that PRV as well, because again, that velocity is going to get too high. And you'll notice with uh, a lot of our sizing information, you'll notice that we have kind of a sweet spot, and this is gonna be true for a lot of manufacturers, to where you wanna try and get that velocity between, uh, and ours in particular, between three and six feet per second. Uh, again, you wanna make sure that it's not too low, not too high, you wanna make sure it's just right. The next thing you should consider is going to be your inlet to outlet ratio on your pressure reducing valve. So that means the pressure on the incoming side versus the pressure on the outgoing side. And, and what we have a tendency of recommending, recommending is no more than a two to one ratio. So if you have, say for example, 120 PSI coming in, you don't want anything less than a 60 PSI going out of that pressure reducing valve. Now, you can get closer to three to one with a lot of our PRVs. However, the closer you get to three to one ratio, the, the more apt you're gonna be to having some screaming and some noise issues, okay? So uh, just remember that. So if, uh, if you do have a, a high pressure coming in, it might be an application where you actually have to put multiple pressure reducing valves in series. So instead of just one PRV, you're actually gonna have two. The first one's going to knock it down part of the way, and the second one's gonna knock it down the rest of the way down to your working pressure to your home or your building, whatever you're working on. Like anything else, maintenance is going to be key to keeping your pressure reducing valve running trouble free. Now you see here in the pictures that you've got some cartridges that are completely full of debris. Now this is going to happen in systems where you know that debris is coming in, whether it be from the municipal water supply or a well. If you do have a scenario like this, this can also cause your pressure reducing valve to be noisy. It can also cause disruptions in flow and, and other problems as well. Now, the nice thing about especially our Kalefi pressure reducing valves is that they can be taken apart and cleaned very, very easily. Now, if the cartridge does get in such poor shape, it can be replaced as well. Now, on a side note, I will also mention that as that cartridge gets all full of debris, that it's going to take more downstream pressure to close off that cartridge assembly. And so you'll actually see your pressure creeping up on the outlet side versus what you actually have it set for. So instead of you know staying at 60 PSI where you set it, it might start creeping up on that guy and you wanna make sure to avoid that too. Now we talked about oversizing and undersizing and causing the noises that are gonna go along with that but how do you take care of those particular problems? And, and one way of doing that and taking care of those wide ranges of flow that you could have in a building is to actually install multiple PRVs in parallel. Okay, you're gonna need that large PRV to make sure that the high flow demands are taken care of, but that large PRV is not gonna do so well with those low flow characteristics. So instead of one big valve, you're gonna actually put one big valve and one smaller valve, again, in parallel. So as you get a small demand from that system, uh, the smaller PRV is going to take over and then as the demand increases, the large PRV kicks in and you're off and running. 
So let's review the five things that we just went over. The first two are going to be sizing. Undersizing and oversizing, obviously a big problem. You want to avoid it. It's going to be to the detriment of the PRV and your customer's experience with that PRV. So you want to make sure you size that guy appropriately. The next thing is going to be inlet to outlet ratios. Again, pressures. If your inlet to outlet pressures are too high, your ratio is too great, greater than that two to one, it's going to lead to a lot of noise issues uh, because of that, uh, that big ratio there. Now, the next thing, number four, is going to be debris. Again, every system is plagued with issues issues with debris, whether it be scale or, or any debris coming in from your municipal water supply. Uh, if you do have those issues, make sure to you know, install a strainer or a media filter of some sort. That'll definitely help out the life of your, uh, of your pressure reducing valve. And last but not least is your flow requirements. Again, we talked about over undersizing and oversizing, but, but there's going to be a lot of scenarios where you need a, a low flow and a high flow all in the same day, all from the same building, and, and maybe one PRV is not going to be able to do it. So definitely consider two PRVs if necessary. So thanks for joining us today on another episode of the five things you need to know. Again, my name is Cody Mack, and we hope you tune in for the next one.